Oh, good evening. Uh, I think that we can start now. Uh, first, a few words about uh, myself. My name is Mita Chokic, and I will be uh, speaking on what are the challenges that we can expect when uh, when uh, engineering complex software solutions. A uh, few words about myself. I'm a principal software architect on, on software for critical infrastructures. I've been doing that for the past 15 years. And uh, f also for the same time, I, uh, was, uh, I, w I was working with uh, young colleagues, with students, with engineers and software architects in educational purposes. Uh, and I also spent some six years at the Faculty of Technical Sciences as a teaching assistant. Um, my, a lot of my work is uh, around uh, system-wide uh, solution optimization and then process optimization as well, and reducing the uh, total cost of the ownership of, the, uh, of, of our system. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, first, uh, a little bit of, uh, uh, but just to check for a few things, uh, how many of you, uh, just to have better understanding of the, uh, public that is uh, here today, how many of you did uh, write or review some code this week? So 50-50, <laughs> a little bit less, okay. Just to know how to adjust the, uh, <clears throat> adjust the, uh, this lecture or presentation. So uh, firstly, uh, we'll go to some uh, introduction and then uh, I will uh, spend some uh, around 15 uh, minutes or so time uh, for uh, education, chain for productivity and complexity and for uh, expenses and challenging uh, with them when developing large and complex software solutions. Uh, the idea is uh, more on the te technical side of the challenges uh, when working with, with people, uh, then uh, people management. I can see that that is people management and uh, work organization is quite well covered in, in this conference. Uh, and uh, this is to avoid overlapping and I still believe that there are some, uh, this is somehow from the view of, of, of completely technically oriented uh, person. So uh, as for, for an introduction, when building complex solutions, uh, any kind of, 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 of solving any kind of complex issue, uh, there are challenges that need to be uh, overcome. So uh, this, uh, this stays for building a bridge, a submarine, as I like to mention, or, or building a an, an, an skyscraper. So, so uh, there are also challenges when building complex software solutions, when we're working with large teams, uh, working on, on, on complex issues, on distributed systems, uh, with system that has a lot of, a lot of constraints. And uh, since the, since the software, uh, software uh, engineering uh, is uh, more or less young discipline, uh, there are still yet a lot of experiences, documented experiences and experiences that we can change between each other that uh, help uh, building uh, such systems and uh, avoid some costs and issues that were um, seen earlier or so. So uh, the aim is uh, really on practical, uh, on practical issues and it is all, uh, heavily influenced by other, um, uh, by the exposure I had uh, to how ad, uh, other uh, big IT companies work, uh, such as Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Twitter, or, or so. So uh, at first, I would like to make an, uh, a difference or, or to differentiate uh, programming and uh, engineering. So uh, programming is the process of writing code itself, right? And uh, uh, when we take a look at engineering, engineering is all the infrastructure about it, including writing the code. So uh, from, the, from, uh, from the software engineering point of view, the engineering would include uh, uh, all the processes, the tools, uh, uh, then <coughs> uh, the uh, procedures, uh, practices, uh, good practices, etc. education chain and everything around that to make a final uh, software solution. And uh, if we take a look at, uh, and when we speak about engineering, it is typically related to a systematic approach towards building a solution. So not some kind of ad hoc 
uh, hobby uh, oriented uh, building so we meet now agree what we to what should we build and then continue working on that but rather uh, it includes some planning understanding of the issue etc uh, and <clears throat> and opposed to computer science uh, it is it is really oriented toward uh, solving and practical real life uh, issues uh, the, this is a quote uh, for actual Google uh, software engineering at Google, uh, but I mean it, it stands it, it stands nicely, uh, and uh, the, I would uh, li I like to quote uh, also David Parnas. He is one of the pioneers in software engineering. That software engineering is related to building a multi-version system uh, with multiple people uh, involved uh, involved in it. So, uh, of course, there is not one size fits all. Uh, it all, uh, a lot of things depend on, uh, on the application that we're building. So it is not the same if you're building a demonstration version of a software, or if we're building an, uh, something like a Linux kernel that needs to be used for five, 10, 15 or more years. There are different approaches. Not every approach uh, is, uh, uh, is, is um, not every approach can be uh, can be tried, and uh, it, so if we're having like something like a one-time shot, we need to make a demonstration-level project. We would probably less time spent on uh, on uh, making that extendable, making it uh, uh, making uh, the operational expenses of such solution as lower as possible, because the motivation is. Um, it, motivation is different. And uh, this uh, lecture aims uh, solutions uh, specifically that are intended to be used uh, for longer periods of time. So to be used from five to, 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 15, to 15 years uh, of time. Uh, we will uh, focus on, uh, on um, engineering technical challenges when building such solutions uh, but either way, uh, from technical or from people side of, of management, uh, the main challenge uh, uh, that needs to be solved to make a uh, cost-effective, profitable performance solution uh, is complexity, or uh, as usually said, complexity management. Uh, that complexity can arise from the sol solution itself, from the problem we are trying to solve, uh, from, from the teams that we have and how to manage those teams uh, and etc. And usually, uh, successfully managing a software uh, product is related to to successfully managing the complexity of the whole of the whole system. Uh, so, um, uh, first thing, uh, uh, first thing, and uh, I will now continue with uh, the education part of the of the teams. Uh, when uh, successfully building high system, uh, large systems, uh, the starting point is uh, education of the teams. Uh, how can we assure that we have the right people that can build the, the, the solution? Uh, and team can, the team that can uh, uh, go through the, through the issue, understand it, and, and, and build it. And this is, an, this is not related only to software industry. Uh, but uh, what is specific to, to software industry is the discipline is quite, uh, is quite young. So uh, when you take a look at civil engineering, typically uh, engineers get a lot of uh, insights and understanding uh, already at, at, at college or at, at the university. While at, uh, at the software and uh, in the field of software engineering, it is not as much uh, applicable for different reasons. Uh, and uh, it is typically divided educational engineers in two parts. Uh, I like to quote uh, Professor Mills. He is a professor at Technological Fa Institute in Florida, an IBM research fellow, so a guy with both uh, understanding on the practical issues and also scientific parts, is that uh, the education is divided in uh, university education and industrial education. And uh, from the... In, in, university stand, uh, education standpoint, it typically lasts like two to four years. It typically provides, uh, it typically provides some uh, basic level, of, uh, basic level of, of, of knowledge on various topics, right? 
uh, and uh, students tend to finish their, finish their uh, project or so and then leave it over there. They don't live with it and they do not need to maintain it and uh, the, the purpose is completely different. But from the industrial point of view or during the industrial education, it is the moment when engineers start working on, on, on concrete practical issues and when these and uh, uh, learning and educating them during this, uh, during this period of time is usually uh, related, uh, uh, goes hand in hand with, the, with working at the company. Uh, so uh, if we, uh, and what are the, the, the challenges or our experience that we had in this, in this area? Uh, depending on the plant, uh, on the plant growth of the, of the company, uh, different approaches are made. Of course, that there is, if we go to the right or to the left, there are two approaches. One is related to uh, mentor-oriented education, and the other one is, uh, or, uh, is to systematic education uh, planning. Uh, so uh, during, uh, depending on the growth, uh, different approaches provide different results. So uh, if the company needs to grow like 10%, typically one team member per team, uh, usually mentorship approach is quite, quite fine. So uh, the team would get new team member, that team member uh, would be, uh, get a mentor inside the team or the whole team would work with, uh, with them. And after, after that, uh, the, as the time goes by, as the new member matures, he will integrate with the team and have, uh, have great, uh, uh, have great um, add value to the, to, and it would add great value to the team. But what if we would need to aim like 30% growth or 40% or growth? Uh, for our, from our experience, when organizing such, such uh, growth uh, of, the, of the teams, it would uh, definitely, the results were better when uh, the education of the team members was organized in one systematic fashion uh, similar to the university level. So, we would gather like 40 or, or, or 30 or 40 or 40, 50 uh, new uh, employees, then make an, uh, fine measurements or their skills. So we would see where each of them is and what is the knowledge gap that they would need. I mean, this would typically uh, differ whether they're juniors or, or maybe seniors. With seniors, you don't work multi-threading. I mean, it is expected to be to be known. With juniors, there are some basic knowledge or holes that they did not manage to uh, to understand or to learn uh, while they were uh, at the while where they were at the university. But uh, after the scanning of the of the group that needs to go through the education chain, uh, we would then make um, adjusted or customized education program that would least last from. Three from uh, one week to three weeks, depending four weeks, depending on the on the team or what we need to to adjust. And uh, the thing that uh, really provides great uh, uh, value in this work is that after that uh, period of time, that course that is done, which would include some theoretical knowledge, probably then some practical working with them uh, extensively, uh, is that we would get an uh, an team of people that can be. Uh, scheduled uh, or, or, or put to different teams, but they are more or less uh, the, on the same level with, uh, with knowledge. And we would have uniform knowledge and we would uh, take out uh, or, or re relieve the uh, team members, mostly team architect or, or team lead or tech lead, whichever uh, company has a division of, of, of titles. Uh, from that job, uh, uh, especially since not all teams can uh, make a uh, steep growth uh, when added new members. Like uh, in, in, this, in this approach, uh, the team members do not have that kind of, dot, do not have that kind, uh, kind of, of overhead. And that has proved really, really well. And uh, working, uh, working in this, uh, in, in this manner, uh, the uh, basic knowledge people uh, get when they uh, start working with the company, we have uniform knowledge uh, between them. Um, additionally, additionally, uh, one thing maybe which is common knowledge, but it, it, from the, from the ex previous uh, experience when working, 
common sense is not so common at the end. So it depends all on the number of the of the people working and the different backgrounds and cultures, etc. Uh, so that uh, the 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 best approach uh, would be to work with top performers. Of course, I mean uh, it is. Uh, at least, uh, unless the company is uh, charging body count, uh, working with top performance uh, is, is, is greatest in, 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 any, uh, in any aspect, although it has other challenges. But uh, you would have a smaller amount of people, smaller communication paths, uh, a sm a smaller um, overhead uh, when uh, communicating uh, between each other's and uh, top performers, they hate working on uh, boring, repetitive tasks. So they, when they get a task that is something repetitive, like, like manual testing or so, they tend to optimize it and to automate it. Even though some, some parts are always left or, or can be left to be manual, but they tend to, to automate uh, the, uh, the whole process. So uh, from my personal experience, uh, it's an order of magnitude uh, difference in performance. It's probably not an order of magnitude in, in some other benefits, but it's, it is in order of magnitude in performance. And I'm not uh, the only one I found uh, various authors uh, saying different, uh, the same thing, but only in difference whether it is like three times more performance, five times, 10 times, or, or so. So, um, when we have uh, multiple teams, we have top performers or team members that we have uh, managed to, to build. The next challenge that is posed is how to make sure that our teams that are uh, like maybe 10 or 20 or 50 teams, how to make sure that knowledge level in all of these teams is the same or similar. And that poses really high, high challenge. Um, basically, from my personal experience, we haven't found some uh, systematic or automatic way to, to address that issue aside from working with them. So uh, top experts should work with, with other teams and uh, review their code, review their designs, review the requirements, and then to see what is the uh, maturity of each team and whether the team, how the team can be ranked. And that is, that is really, really challenging to make, uh, to make uh, uniform, uniform knowledge and uh, output quality of the, of the solution that is, uh, that is built. Uh, in uh, Google engineering book, a software engineering book at Google, that part is extensively, extensively uh, explained on how they did it uh, at, uh, at their company. Uh, basically, we would centralize uh, the code reviews when working with multiple teams to make sure that the output is more or less the same until the team maturity is in, uh, until the team is uh, enough skilled um, to so we can skip that step. It would slow down the output of the team, but it would good uh, uniform output uh, output of the quality. Uh, and uh, now that we have uh, set up our teams and the company has managed to, to keep the, the teams, which is not an easy task, and some other people were talking on this topic, so I'll leave it to them. Uh, we, we, can know, we can go to, to, the, next, uh, to the next topic. Uh, next topic is related uh, between the complexity uh, and, uh, and productivity. So uh, if we take any kind of, of, of software population, and uh, tasks that, uh, are, that are meant to be, to be implemented. Basically, as much as uh, big and complex task we have, a smaller number of, of, of engineers can, ch uh, can tackle them. So, I mean, this is not something, this is not something, uh, something new. Similar analysis were processed uh, I mean, years before and, 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 and so on. Uh, in the military field, in police field, because they're managing uh, quite large, quite large systems, uh, and uh, as much as you manage to to make tasks less complex, this doesn't uh, mean only tasks like development tasks, but processes, uh, product itself, the issue that needs to be solved. 
a larger number of, of people can participate in it. And that is something that, that each of us wants. Uh, once we want teams uh, that are not like, okay, we have like this one guy, he's a genius, and he works this complex side of code, and these are drones that are working on some less challenging, uh, challenging stuff, and no one can get into this more complex algorithm, technology stack, or, or, or w w whatever. whatever. Um, even the, the, there are researches that after you lower the complexity under one, uh, under one uh, part, there are people that cannot comprehend that kind of uh, complexity, and probably they're not for, for, this kind of, uh, for this kind of job. Okay, so, um, and how is uh, complexity, uh, how is complexity met? But first, what do we get if we do not solve this issue? If we continue to work, we have like a complex system, right? And complex processes, complex uh, teams, uh, inter-team communication. And so, uh, what will happen if it stays like that? I mean, it stays a mess. Uh, the code reflects the architecture, architecture, uh, the organization, the organization of the teams reflects the, the teams, uh, uh, right? And people are working on something that they cannot uh, completely comprehend and make uh, changes, they make a mess out of the code and making a spaghetti or Frankenstein-like uh, solution. So, I mean, there are companies that are working constantly in this, in this manner, but it uh, draws constant, constant investment in handling it the right way. Uh, so, uh, when speaking on, on complexity, since it is an old tale, even in software, okay, so peop people, used to pro people used to process this question, write, uh, write uh, papers and books on this topic. So it is not something, uh, it's not something new. Uh, it, it has a long, uh, long history. But here are some of the quotes of, of more or less famous uh, software-related people. Dijkstra would hate to call him engineer, but uh, nonetheless, the simplicity is prerequisite for reliability. Uh, the art is to organize complexity. The price for reliability is the pursuit of utmost simplicity, and so on. So he received jobs, quote, complexity, you need to conquer it, and etc. Uh, this one is interesting. Simplicity is a great virtue, but it requires hard work to achieve it and education to appreciate it. To make things worse, complexity sells better. And I mean, this, this really, I, I've seen this on, on really working <laughs> like that. So uh, to, to jump through these uh, conclusions, uh, they, the issue that we want to, to solve is how to manage complexity of the system. So if we take a look on how the complexity is usually solved, we, if we have any kind of complex issue, how we can address it. Uh, it is by structuring it or breaking it into smaller pieces that when we take a look at each of those pieces, we can intellectually comprehend them. And this is, this is the real, the real uh, challenge. And if we take a look on how to decrease the complexity of the, um, uh, of the software development process or, or building a software solution, uh, it, is, uh, it is related to uh, breaking it down from one point, uh, its, its logical complexity uh, to, to stages on, or the parts. So we have like, you know, requirement, elicitation process, uh, designing, implementation, etc., uh, to get a better understanding of what needs to be built uh, from one point. And another, uh, another is organizational division uh, and organization between teams, which is not a topic uh, now, but I only mention it. Um, mention it uh, to get better, better, uh, better picture. So we would want teams that have as, uh, as, as small communication overhead as possible, something like surgical team when they understand each other even though they don't talk really little, uh, uh, talk, uh, uh, don't talk much uh, from one part and from the another part we want uh, a software solution that can be kept uh, under uh, under the intellectual capacity, of, so we can uh, keep it under intellectual control, so that we understand the issue that we are solving, and not oh, if I change this part, I, I don't know what will blow up. 
So if we get into that shady part, I mean, it's, 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 really, it's really an issue. Uh, and there are a number of techniques that can be used to, to, to address this. So uh, when speaking on uh, breaking down uh, algorithmic complexity, uh, I would like to point out uh, simplified phases of development and uh, what are the some challenges that we that we that we have and had and how did we address them some practical observations so uh, if we go from this part of requirement elicitation or basically understanding the issue that we want to want to solve uh, we can find uh, like 400 years before Christ discussion on this by Plato, how to solve an issue, how to understand it or so. So it's not, it's not a new, new idea, but what, was, what has shown critical in this phase, uh, in the phase of understanding the, um, the issue is uh, to detect fundamental requirements. And basically what are the fundamental requirements? When building an, an, an object like this or so, uh, we, have, we set up foundation for, for, for an object, right? And after that, uh, we cannot say, okay, put a chimney in here, in, in, in the center room, or it would be uh, quite pricey, right? And uh, what does it mean that uh, changing fundamental requirements re re requires rebuilding the solution or tearing it down or refactoring? I mean, it, it, it requires some, some great, great effort to do it. When we speak to uh, people outside the software industry and when we discuss, uh, I mean, we do not know, need to to have uh, like a uh, thorough discussion or why the balcony cannot be uh, added or why my house cannot have 15 floors or so. I mean, people do understand that, but in software, which is quite an abstract, quite an abstract construct, it is not such as, um, it is not as much as uh, visible or easy to, to understand. And for from from my personal experience uh, that is one of the one of the important uh, and one of the sources of uh, misunderstanding so if i for example a fundamental requirement uh, this solution will be built for some specific hardware like esp32 microcontroller if i bound it to that specific requirement making making it uh, cross platform it would increase the the price probably right it can increase the price or fundamental requirement can be performance requirement if i get an if i need to build a messaging system this process is 100 messages or tweets per second or per minute whichever and uh, supports like 100 concurrent users it is uh, really really uh, it can be really complex to make that to scale to 1 million uh, uh, same as when building a house. If I build a house that needs to have one, one story or two stories, it will not be easy to uh, move it uh, to become a 15-story building. Uh, the, 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 same, the same idea is behind that. And uh, this, uh, this, can be, this can be really, really challenging uh, to find these uh, fundamental requirements because we're bounding to the, to the operating system, to the framework we use. Uh, the tooling, etc. Et but it is something where uh, the maximum amount of money can be saved. So as we go below, uh, this is the place where the maximum amount of money can be saved, and then decreasing uh, below during the other other steps of the of the process uh, development. Uh, and understanding and finding the the, the fundamental requirements. Uh, is uh, is challenging and uh, it it spends some time and it can be difficult if the imp technical parts of the people and for example product owner don't have uh, good communication if you have like product owner that thinks that he's Steve Jobs and doesn't want to budge even a little I mean that that can be an issue because you're building something that can be of few order of magnitude cheaper than needed okay so uh, uh, is the other phase is feature design. During this process, uh, it is uh, important to keep the, the solution under intellectual uh, control uh, so that we understand what we are building to make sure that 
some previously set up fundamental requirements are not broken. So uh, if I'm building a distributed database, it's a nice example because it's, it's really complex and you can simplify it or, or make it more complicated by orders of magnitude, magnitude but just uh, changing a few requirements. So if you're building a distributed database in three data centers, Novi Sad, Belgrade and Niche, and uh, we have requirement to make available, uh, to make possible, to make changes in any of those data centers. It would be drastically com more complicated than when building a database with one hot copy and others one as read-only. And that is something, there are, or of course, uh, limitations to this approach, but it would cost significantly, significantly less. Uh, so uh, I can uh, make an um, I can make an uh, example regarding this. Uh, we were building uh, Dushko remembers uh, support for for multiple data centers, and uh, by tuning these requirements uh, to the similar uh, reports like this. So how will we uh, recover from an error? Uh, how much will it be o automated? Uh, uh, the, the, uh, will there be possibility to work on both sites, or is it even needed to work on both uh, from both centers, data centers, in the same time? We managed to to decrease uh, to decrease an implementation cost like uh, two orders of magnitude uh, by uh, uh, tailoring and understanding the customer what exactly they need, because even the customer is not usually uh, doesn't have all the, the parameters and understand the uh, the whole solution. I mean, they have some vague idea. It is really that the customer knows exactly what, what, what he needs. Okay, so all this process and the requirements solicitation and design and, and the implementation needs to be done in an iterative manner. I mean, this is not one-way street. Typically, during the, the design, we would come up with some issues and see, okay, so if we could change this requirement, we can decrease the cost of the, of the solution like an order of magnitude. Okay, so let's speak with, with product owner or a product manager. He will speak with, with the customer or we will directly speak to the customer and get a better understanding whether that investment uh, makes sense or no. Maybe it was something, you know, went like a note on, 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 on a memo and went into moments of, of, of meeting, but there is no uh, real, real purpose for it. It can be uh, it can be it can be solved uh, differently. During the implementation, uh, during the implementation phase, uh, typical issue is related to lower seniority uh, and whether the guys were employed for the technology stack or for the concepts. So, uh, one more thing regarding the, the employment: it has shown uh, really, really uh, better. Uh, when the guys that uh, we are working with uh, have good knowledge of the concepts and they can learn the framework uh, rather than employing guy, uh, engineers or team members uh, for that know certain, certain technology stack but need to later learn the concepts. So if you're building a distributed system, the challenges are more or less the same uh, with no matter what the technology you're using whether you're using .NET or using Java or so. I mean, the, the challenges that needs to be solved are more or less the same. But it would be cheaper to make someone spend like a week to get to know new or different framework than learn him all the challenges that distributed computing uh, brings in. So uh, during the implementation, uh, the, but this is mostly related to younger crowd, uh, people in their 20s tend to write the code so that everyone can see, oh, I'm so smart. I mean, and it, it, becomes, it becomes complex. It works, though. No? It becomes complex. Uh, and uh, the motivation is not, okay, I want code that is easy to maintain. And in two weeks, in your month, or, or in, in six months, I want to be able to maintain it. And uh, as the time passes, when we all go through those pain points, right? We then aim uh, toward uh, writing more, uh, more um, understandable code, uh, hopefully well documented. Even though it's it's not, <laughs> it's not always the case. Uh, but uh, th there's a different, and th that is the main challenge uh, when uh, when when implementing on how to make a solution, uh, how to make a solution. 
uh, that is that is easy to maintain and, and to to understand. Uh, so even in this phase, sometimes we can it comes up. Okay, so it's the thing that this guy here designing the solution thought. I mean, it cannot be done like this. It also increases the cost of the of the solution, and then the team would speak again uh, with their architect and maybe with product owners to get better understanding whether what is really needed and what is something that can be that can be missed or changed or adapted uh, to decrease the cost of the of the solution. Oh, sorry, I, I went through one through slides. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, by keeping the complexity of the of the solution under control, uh, we have more people that can uh, work on the issue. Uh, we have more um, people that can understand the issue. Uh, new newly employed. Uh, engineers can get into the the, the, the problem that is being uh, that is being solved, and it is not some like uh, mystery black box that needs to be to be conquered. Uh, this is also, or as I mentioned, this is also relates to the issues that are related to uh, to, to issues of, of the interperson communication, team organization, clean architecture. Uh, the architecture depends on the on the organization. The organization depends on the architecture of the solution. They are like in, interconnected. Uh, so those are those are some challenges that uh, that we came up when building the the system, and that we are still trying to solve and optimize or or, or similar. And at the end, delivery. And now regarding the and uh, I usually get a question: Why waterfall? I mean. This is not a waterfall. I mean, it's it's, it's cyclic. Uh, it is a cyclic uh, iteration of, of all of these stages, and we can jump back and forth as needed uh, to decrease the total cost cost of ownership and the complexity of the system. And, uh, and now uh, uh, the third topic I wanted to to mention is how are uh, costs being observed uh, when building a complex solution. So when we're building like an, 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 uh, a web application or, or simple that is expected to have short uh, lifespan or, or in a demo project or prototype, uh, typically uh, what is uh, accounted for is how time would they need to build it and when will I have some minimal deliver, delivery uh, delivery part of software that I can present to someone. Uh, but when building uh, infrastructure systems, or not infrastructure, complex systems that need to have high uh, duration of the exploitation or, or high, uh, a large number of years to be, to be used, right? And extended is used by third parties, et cetera. Uh, uh, these, teams, uh, these things uh, a little bit change. So uh, just for a quick intro, uh, capital expenses uh, or capex is uh, related to the investment that is needed to build a solution, and the operation ex expenses uh, are expenses that are needed to be uh, that are like monthly or weekly or so expenses to run the solution. Uh, when uh, they are commonly overlooked, I, you can all think of it. When was the last time you had that discussion at the company? Maybe you have it daily or weekly or so. Maybe never. Maybe sometimes. But uh, what has shown is that poorly designed feature with requirement. I want to push this to have it in two weeks, uh, to have it tomorrow, to have it in three weeks or in three sprints or so. Uh, it can. We can see the result faster. But it can lead to expenses, uh, hidden expenses that are later charged every year of, of, the, of the exploitation. So poorly designed uh, feature will spend more resources on the cloud, CPU, memory, network bandwidth, whichever. Uh, also, if there are some manual steps that complete workforce needs to conduct, it will bring in some additional costs that everyone needs to, okay, aha, I know I have this issue, and for that I need to shut it down, uh, start it again, log in, clear the cache, or so, or so on. Uh, then um, how hard is to maintain the solution? Someone uh, build, uh, building a simple solution, it requires effort, 
for the solution to truly be simple. And with this, we, uh, and uh, one of the really important aspects when building such big systems with hundreds of people involved in development is how easy it is to troubleshoot the issue. So if we get a call uh, for, from the, from the on-duty on -duty team, uh, what is the time to the analysis or triage of the issue? So this issue is related to this component and this team, and this is the, co uh, this is the issue that introduced it. Uh, making, it um, uh, making this issue uh, triage uh, uh, easy uh, decreases the, the time that most qualified uh, guys in the company spend to analyze the issue. And this is, this is of course, uh, executed using making clear uh, clear solution, clear architecture, and extensive extensive logging in the application or tracing or whichever approach is, is, is used. And uh, if we take in consideration that the issue will be used for the next 10 years, and there, are, there will be some sporadic issues, coming up and bugs reported, I mean, that can be, that can be really, really significant overhead to the cost of the whole, whole solution. Uh, and of course, if we are running poorly optimized solution, what are the cost of upfront that you need to pay and uh, for each monthly subscription in our Azure or, or AWS? Or uh, what is the price to later optimize the, the, the solution to try to decrease? Maybe it will not be pass, uh, possible. Maybe it would need some tear down and, and uh, building the solution from, uh, from scratch. So uh, these are all these abilities that need to be uh, addressed. Um, I won't go in, in, each, of, in each of them in, in great detail, such as maintainability, upgradability performance, security, but if you're building a solution that will last for like 10 years, you would probably go through different versions of the framework, to diff different versions of the development environment, operating systems, uh, browsers, or et cetera. And it, that is something that uh, needs to be figured out and step up uh, from, the, from the early start uh, to avoid uh, later costly upgrades, such as upgrading and framework from one version to another version, I mean, it, it can cost a fortune if it's something like that is not planned in the in development process uh, as well. Okay, so thank you. And are there any questions? Uh -huh. Okay, we have two questions. Three, <laughs> great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> Okay. Full, for example. And there is a transition to the core, and you need to either create a new application, migrate users, how would you do it, and, and keep these expenses low, because mm -hmm. uh, the technology is being deprecated, or will be deprecated by the manufacturer, mm -hmm. and there is no how, how would you do it? Uh, okay, so uh, basically we had uh, similar situations. Uh, with migration on, on, between the frameworks that are uh, that will not be supported, right? Uh, to the frameworks that are, and uh, the the main, uh, especially when working with with .NET, the main uh, challenge or the main thing that needs to be addressed is to uh, make uh, the changes in source code as such that we uh, have a similar uh, that we. Um, uh, leave any kind of .NET 4.8, for example, specific out, specifics out, and uh, so we can move to the uh, to use the cross-platform or cross-framework, uh, cross-framework uh, uh, syntax and, and 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 code or so. So it would probably need uh, it, it would need uh, uh, multiple iterations, where the first would be what are the differences between the point for 4 point 4.8, and where do we when can we where can we expect um, issues to 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 come across? Then aligning the code with the standard that is both aligned with 4.8 and 4. Point uh, or, or .NET Core, if possible, and to see what will we do with the part of the code that is not migrated to, to, .NET, to .NET Core. So it, it is something that will go in, in iterations, probably uh, propagate, uh, probably updated as part of the part of the system, not in one single 
step and one big chunk of uh, uh, change list or commit on, on, on the repository. So I hope, did I uh, provide an answer? Uh -huh, okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Could you mention several testing activities complete which can increase productivity? Yes, of course. So uh, we <coughs> we have uh, multiple uh, multiple applications. Uh, um, uh, the product is really is really big. There are like uh, 40 to 50 teams working on uh, working on it uh, with the different uh, challenges of the complexity of the features that we are de that we are developing. Uh, so um, the thing, uh, firstly, we aim to have a safety net around everything that we build, uh, to build uh, code that, that, is, uh, that is testable, that can be, uh, that can be checked uh, and, and uh, verified via automated tests. We don't stress everything needs to be unit tested. It needs to be tested, whether it will be unit test or component test or, or performance test or some kind of stress test. It, it depends on the it, it depends on the particular problem because it has shown that when stressing that everything needs to be a uh, certain percent of unit tested, uh, so the, the code needs to conform the test. Maybe I can uh, close that uh, whole component and then stress test it. So uh, the things that we uh, that, that helped us a lot uh, is and uh, is uh, building an extensive uh, unit unit and component tests and running. Uh, Often, um, uh, often running uh, stress tests uh, that would uh, push the solution to the limits to see whether what kind of issues can arise, whether there are some race conditions, how the solution is behaving under under the the load or the high memory or high CPU consumption or so. Uh, this has helps uh, helped us a lot uh, because we tend to receive. Uh, smaller number of um, issues uh, like that one from the customer. So, I mean, a lot of the issues related to, to performance are uh, caught this way that are not specific to customers, to customers' environment. What are delays here? You saw them somewhere. To testing. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, 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 what are the delays uh, and other challenges related uh, to testing? Um, uh, challenges related to testing uh, are usually bound to the to high or or huge number of features and detecting whether some infrastructure change uh, can influence uh, can influence uh, other features that we do not see even connection with with, with them it's i mean we have like an infrastructure part and then multiple features relying on that on that part so uh, definitely uh, is uh, automating uh, tests as much as possible uh, to to uh, avoid uh, manual testing as much as possible but at the end someone needs to sit down and have a thorough testing of the solution uh, to catch catch uh, to catch issues that cannot be or are hard to to stress when uh, to find when uh, using automatic uh, uh, when using automatic uh, testing and what are the the issues that we we have not yet uh, solved right hmm. i mean there are they're related to testing uh, how to decrease the cost of the testing that we are extensively working on that. Uh, so uh, there are hundreds of, 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 of thousands of tests, various types, and they spend uh, time and CPU time and memory and so, and a lot of effort is being directed into decreasing this time and optimizing it uh, to, to make it, uh, make it faster, more and more and more rel reliable. I mean, that's an ongoing issue, but that is an ongoing issue as long as you have the product. Right. How much communication between teams and processes can help to optimize uh, optimize development delivery story? Aha. Uh -huh. Between teams and and, and process. Uh, can can you please? Uh -huh. Zoran. 
Ah, can you please explain? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I understand. Uh, so, uh, if we take in, uh, if we take in, wh what are the issues, uh, from my point of view, uh, in uh, with processes and communication with large corporations? It is then a possible danger or, 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 or possibility that someone that does not use a process defines it. So, if you have like a guy that doesn't have anything to do with the product, but somehow manages to to work on, on tries to, to change a process or, 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 or update it or so. So uh, keeping the process definition as near uh, and uh, as possible to the people that are working toward the, those processes may, may really, makes really a huge difference. I mean, it is common sense, but not always. Yeah. So th that is the thing that really helped us a, a lot, that development teams define their processes, of course, from the, with the consultation with the security guys and, and so, but uh, to make the decisions as close to teams as possible. Uh, Dushko, I skipped you. <laughs> Aha, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so, uh, could you mention? Uh, so, uh, in your experience, is it more productive to have dedicated system infra team or to have DevOps approach infra work inside, uh, inside development team? So, uh, the, under the infrastructure team, uh, what do you uh, consider? Uh, can you please explain? Uh, is that like a common component, software components or computer network? Uh, it's uh, in, a, in a cloud platform. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aha, yeah, I understand. So, uh, depending on the depending on the uh, on the current processes, I mean, uh, it would it, it it depends on the on the current processes. I mean, uh, if it is something that can be done uh, quite easily, and you get like allocated your resource pool, and uh, it is one click away. Of course, it would be great to be kept inside uh, inside the the teams. But if it uh, and uh, if it includes uh, like um, building some kind of additional software support for that or uh, ordering additional hardware, then it needs to be put aside for, for, for different, uh, to be done by a different team. But not to try to put this knowledge also in the development team to be able to run it. Uh, it, 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 it typically, uh, in, in our case, it, it depends on the, on, the, on the product itself. So, uh, I mean, uh, it, it would be, it, it is great when you have one click actions and streamlined processes to put as much as all, all those stuff on the team to, to use it uh, cost effectively and then and, and without some overhead. But uh, when you, when the infrastructure changes uh, include some uh, security changes or, or new hardware that need, needs to be purchased, I mean, it, it cannot be done bec because it is done on premise. So it, for cloud, yeah, definitely uh, as much as possible in, in, in teams. Yeah. Uh, so, uh huh. Two. Okay. Uh, okay. Dushko, I don't see. Uh, uh Can you see? Uh, do you see that corporate tendency to convert capex to opex, naturally encourage and favor complex solutions? Ah, uh -huh, yeah. So I mean, I agree with you. Uh, the corporations uh, try to uh, try to to push in every in every business uh, to subscription oriented. Is that is that the, the, the direction you were going in? Uh, to to subscription oriented uh, business models. I for myself, I don't did not purchase Microsoft Word. I use like monthly subscriptions. Uh, for, for, for that. So uh, during, uh, with uh, that trend of uh, monthly subscriptions and you also moving to the, to the cloud, I mean, which is not something new, but it, it, it lasts for quite some time, 
uh, great, uh, great uh, costs can be cut if this is taught on time. I still think that inside the software world, uh, world it is uh, not yet uh, in focus as much as it should be. But it should be definitely because those are the areas of, of, of great uh, of great savings, air increasing uh, margin of the profit margin. If the cost can be decreased, I mean it's an, like a challenge when uh, you have highly optimized tool solution, maybe you can run on one server instead of 50, and so and decrease the, the the expenses of the hardware by the factor of 50. Yeah, hmm? Uh -huh. And it's uh, seen differently than operational expense that will usually be associated to maintenance or paying for resources like cloud. And mm -hmm. we see now a tendency of corporations to tend to move those expenses. And for example, cloud is a good example of that. One big selling point is to move from JPEG to OPEX. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as a natural driver for corporations to favor and push for more complex solutions because that fits their purpose. It moves those expenses mm -hmm. to later. Uh, I believe that in the end, pushing more complex solutions would increase uh, would increase uh, cost. I mean, it would not provide any kind of benefit, even maybe short term. Uh, people pay for more money something that they think that is really complicated, right? Or, or really great, but I believe that in the in the in the long run, uh, favoring complex solutions would not give the the issues. But I'm strictly speaking, not from 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 experience point, but from personal uh, impression. So that's why I ask. I uh -huh. see that disconnect from the management and the business side of the story and the mm. technical. Yeah. We tend to see that in the long run it will be cheaper, but uh, business. <laughs> Business, <now. laughs> yeah, 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 that that is true. <laughs> so there was like an, what are they doing? Did I miss some question? Just a moment. Fourth one. Fourth one. What are delays you identified? No, I believe I. I fourth. Fourth. Uh, do you always deliver? No. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you always deliver optimal, not to say perfect solution? Or you are sometimes a bit ashamed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for quite some <laughs> time. Uh, not to wait too long since market and order conditions change. Uh, so uh, there is no, uh, there is no, uh, we aim to deliver complete solution that can be, but uh, not like uh, the ultimate or the, or the final solution, but the solution that customer can use and that can uh, if needed, uh, later be uh, improved or so. We do not make an, uh -huh, okay, so here is the deadline. That is the only optimization criteria. Because if we chase uh, the delivery date as the only optimization criteria, uh, then everything else falls apart. And uh, some, uh, for, for, for our business, it is uh, of great uh, uh, value if we, at the end, make complete solution the customer expects. So we do not tend to favor, okay, give this for that for like uh, like a month or, or so, I'm, I'm never favoring that, uh, but uh, we will make a new one later. No, we have requirements. We know what are the customer's expectations. Uh, they will get maybe uh, in phases, but the end solution will be the one that they, that they aim for. So I hopefully, Mm -hmm. So, uh, as much as the customer uh, is uh, satisfied with that. So, if we see, okay, so we have like these uh, three or four features that needs to be uh, provided to the customer, uh, we will provide this one and this one. I mean, that's fine. But if we, uh, uh, we uh, don't uh, tend to give, okay, we'll give you this one, but we will have to rewrite it again. So, yeah, I mean, we, we provide uh, com complete features but not complete feature sets. They're incrementally provided to customer. Uh, I don't know if I, if I have answered your question. Okay. So I believe that 
Uh, are there any more questions? Someone who doesn't have an app? No? Okay, thank you for your patience.